gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good morning. Welcome back with another edition of the Still Save Show. I'm your host, Just Dave, where we sit down with some of the coolest, most inspiring individuals who have some of the dopest stories of change and transformation you have ever heard or seen. And boy, do I have a story for you today. I got my homie Terry from the league in the building, and we're actually here at the league. What's going down, baby? Yo, this is a vibe. Thank you for coming through. <laughs> this is so dope. Like, for the station to come to us, incredible. And that's and that's a dope intro as well, man. I hope this story is inspiring to somebody. Oh, man, come on now. He's downplaying it, y'all. He's downplaying it, man. I love it, though. I love it. Man, I appreciate you for welcoming me, man, hosting me here. I love the vibe. Uh, I had a chance to kind of walk around, and I really feel like I need to, like, Get a workout in before I leave. I mean, don't tempt me, bro. We can get it in. <laughs> it's been a minute, though, man. It's been a minute. I have been slacking. I have been slacking. I hate to admit it, but uh, I need to get back on it, man. Never a bad time to get back to it. We're coming up on a new year, new mm -hmm. frame. I'm not necessarily the biggest proponent of resolutions. Yeah. Like, I believe that when the calendar changes, it doesn't mean your character changes. So it's Come not on. all about January 1st, yeah. but there is something to making a decision and saying, you know what, line in the sand moment this is where I changed my effort with yeah. the expectation of a changed outcome. Ooh. Some people just want the outcome and it's like, oh, this kid, I got this goal. And it's like, okay, you got a goal, <laughs> put in work then. And they're like, okay, big dog, give me a little time. Uh, yeah. Right? But anytime that moment comes where you're like, this is it. Mm -hmm. I'm in. Yeah, man. Mentally, I'm committed. Spiritually, I'm focused. Therefore, mm. physically, there'll mm -hmm. be a change. Yeah, I'm with you on the re resolutions tip too, man, because I, I, I'm a big proponent of day by day. Yeah, right. I love you know, that. I know it, it. You have to set these milestones and these goals, and it's okay to forecast. But uh, you know, growing up as a, a child of two alcoholics, you know, mm. I grew up in AA. Like some people grow up in church. Yeah, wow. And you know, in that type of world, it's it's an everyday type of thing. Yeah. Right. Um. So, um. I feel you, bro. I feel you. I love that perspective, and thanks for sharing that too. That piece of your story. That's incredible, right? That you grew up exposed to something that a lot of people would never have, right? And you couldn't have chosen that to be your life story or what you grew up under. Yeah. However, it welcomed you into this environment where you're seeing a beautiful thing happen. You're seeing yeah. life change happen. You're seeing freedom happen. You're seeing chains being broken, people walking out different than they came in. Yeah. That's yeah. powerful. And yeah. I love how you, t you said taking it day by day. It reminds me of, I heard a football coach say one time, like, go 1-0 today. Like, it's not about going undefeated all season Bro. long. Every single year, we're going to see somebody crown the champion holding the trophy that has some losses on their records. Man. But it's today. Today. Win today. today. Therefore, if I have a bad day, if I fall off the wagon, if I take my L, I can look at it like, okay, this was a bad day, and tomorrow mm -hmm. can still be a day I yeah. go 1-0. That mindset is powerful. Oh, it is. It is. Because it, it helps you to just be fully present in a moment. Mm. What am I doing about my goal now? Not... What do I want it to be in my five-year plan? Because I can I can afford to slack if I got four plus years to make up for it <laughs> on the way to my five-year plan. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But like, big dog, you gotta lay your head on the pillow tonight. Tonight. What did you do towards your goals today? Yeah, Ooh, man. No, nah, man. I used different. to do, I used to so I used to teach math and I used to tell my kids all the time, my students, and I tell my children this all the time. It's like you don't pass the test on test day. Mm. You pass the test today yes you know what i'm saying yeah. like when you're studying you're passing the test yeah you just take the test yeah, yeah. on test day but you passed it the weeks and days before it actually happened great. based on the effort and the work that you put in come on man you know what i'm saying yes, sir so look i ain't even introduced my man yet you know <laughs> we already getting into it terry man do me a favor bro yeah. tell me and the world a little bit about yourself and then i can't wait to hear all about the league and just see where this conversation takes us yeah for sure so uh i am co-founder of the league uh, my wife and I got this joint started in 2013, so we're a little over nine years strong oh. here. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife has a background from Wall Street and investment banking. She is the brains. She handles business. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I yeah. come from a fitness background, and so me doing fitness, her doing business. Together, we have a fitness business. Um, the league <laughs> is a whole different kind of space, man. Yeah, we have yeah. navigated a whole lot in the way of just what we ultimately feel called to journey through in life and so I was in undergrad studying radio tv film because my yeah, dad and yeah. my stepdad studied that it was like oh, I'm just gonna do what my male father figures did because I don't know what I want to do following their footsteps right you saw it that's what you saw 
age 17, taking a, um, you know, the SAT and applying to colleges. I'm like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I do know I want to go to the next level. I want to pursue an education, right? Yeah. Get in there. Two years into it, I'm like, I don't know if this is what I really want to do with my life. And so I switched gears. I finished out what I started with undergrad. Go ahead. Because that that right there, just let, let, let's rest in that for a second. Yeah, okay. Because a lot of people go to college yep. and they start something. Yep. And they feel like because they put in some effort, they put in some hours, they feel like they have to finish that path. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I've so seen good. a lot of people do that. You yeah. know, they've gone to school for accounting and they get in it and they're like, ah, oh, this isn't really what I wanted to do. But yeah. because they, they acquired some credits, yep. they put in some hours, yep. they feel like, ah, oh, I got to finish. Yeah, but yeah. from what I'm hearing is you started down a particular path and you was like, I recognize that this probably isn't what I want to do. Right. Like, when did you like, how did that shift or how did you recognize, you know, were you scared to switch up? Like, I was scared to switch up. I had a great academic advisor who was like, finish this degree plan you've started. Because okay. if you switch your major right now, they're going to have you here for two extra years, <laughs> taking a ton of courses on this other major. But he challenged me, he said you can also pursue a master's degree in what you ultimately decide you want to do. Mm. If you finish this degree, you now have that. It's a, an accomplishment that's worth something. Yeah. And yeah. it's a springboard to the next thing. Okay. So I ended up, you know, I graduated undergrad in 08. We were in a terrible recession. There was a big freeze in the job market. <laughs> I remember Nobody that. was going to hire me anyway. I was better off going back to school yeah. two more years, getting a master's degree. But I then knew how to finish something I had started and I knew what I ultimately wanted to do career-wise, and yeah. I knew now is my time. So yeah. I went in, studied health and human performance, came away with a master's degree in that. So now you got a guy who started off with studying radio, yeah. decided ultimately, ah, maybe that's not what I want to do full-time. Then I get into strength and conditioning. Now you and I are sitting here in this space doing a radio interview, right? It pays off still to have training formally in the art yeah. of communication, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think for anybody who's going down that road, like you mentioned, that's like, oh, I've already put time into this. I might as well stick with it. Mm -hmm. Now there's something too, finishing what you started, but there's also power in the pivot. Come on. Because come on. if I'm stepping outside of the lane of my calling, my purpose, my destiny, the thing that I was created to do and it's just going to be like, oh, I've already paid these people some money and I've already got some credits built up. I might as well do this. Well, now you're pigeonholing yourself into something that's not going to bring you fulfillment. Come on. It's not going to be worth it a decade, two decades down the line when you wake up and you're like, I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. That's one thing to have a, a bad day and you're not you're just not a yeah. happy person. Yeah. Seasonally. Right. Or circumstantially, things are hard. And you're not happy. That makes sense. But to ultimately look back over your career and your life's work and be like, man, <laughs> I'm over here stealing this paycheck from these people. I'm not happy. I'm not stealing contributing. Stealing this paycheck. Like, I'm not <laughs> actually showing up and shining. Yeah. I'm just here, right? And so I do think there's power in a pivot. I think that when we get new information, yeah. we need to take new action. Yeah. There needs to be an aligned action with every learning. Yeah. So if I'm studying one thing, but I'm beginning to understand, like, what I study outside of what I'm tested for, what I ask questions about, what I'm mm -hmm. seeking, what I delve into and spend my free time trying to learn more about, right. that's telling me something. Maybe my spirit is yearning for that. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what would fulfill me. Why would it fulfill me if it wasn't for me? Maybe this is the thing that God destined me to do. That's my Man. unique impact in the world. Yeah. That's the thing that I'm passionate about. That's the thing I'm skilled in. That's the thing that the world needs, right? Yeah, yeah. And that, to me, is the definition of purpose. So you yeah, go deeper than that, too. With the, the Japanese have this, this concept called ikigai. Okay. And there's four tenets to it. So it's what you're good at. Yeah. It's what you enjoy. Okay. It's what the world needs. And then it's what can you get paid to do? Come on. Don't forget that paid part. So they're like, taking it a step further and <laughs> yeah, saying, yeah. like, what's the right career? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, and then I would say what's healthy for people to explore, though, if they're trying to explore the power of the pivot, should I stick right. to this because it's good money? Should I stick to this because I started it? Or should I do what I'm really passionate about? Sometimes, and this is my opinion, mm -hmm. I'm no researcher, but here's my opinion. Sometimes you got to forget about that money piece because you got to ultimately decide what is going to make me happy. Yeah. 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 No, I hear you, man. Because, I mean, once you figure that out, I do believe the money will come. Right. Yeah. We've heard it so many times. Your gift will make room for you. Yeah. Um, Matthew 633. I think I say that on every single episode. Hey, I think about it. That Matthew you know, 633. Bro, is, that's it's bars. Real, but it's, it's the same yeah. thing in business, too. You know, yeah. when you seek first the kingdom of God, all these other things will be, will be added, added unto, unto you. you. Right. Yes. So and I, I truly believe that when we start seeking first what really matters. Yeah. Right. The source. Yeah. The resources will 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 find their way to you. Yeah, so um, good. bro, when did you figure that out? Like what like that process of finding out, man, fitness is my thing. 
Yeah. Um, how did you how did you come to that epiphany or to that realization? Yeah, I was a gym rat in college. Okay. Now I'm actually into functional fitness. I get my cardio by running and boxing. I get my lifting. I do some circuit training. Um, but at that time in college, I was just hanging with the athletes. It was yeah, all about yeah. deep squats and heavy bench press. That was like showing all off I knew. in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I had an opportunity. Used to do slamming the, slamming the weights down, just, making all, all the extra that, noise. All of that, man. <laughs> and I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I was starting to learn what I didn't necessarily want to do career-wise. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, radio, TV, film, dope. I'd love an opportunity to do some production. However, is this the thing I feel like I was created to do? There's a man. difference, right? And then not knowing what I really wanted to do, I knew what I enjoyed. I knew where I liked spending my time. And so again, 08, mm -hmm. graduate, no jobs out here. I was taking bogus interviews with corporate America for jobs I didn't want anyway, because it's like, you know, mom and dad said, this is the next step. After you graduate, get a job. job. It's gotta be a job with a 401k and da 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 da. Don't forget it them benefits, like this safe man. salary, uh -huh. you know, seeking the, the typical American thing. Yep, yep. Um, and then I remember, Job interviews going bad. I'm at, I'm at mom and dad's crib. I turned on the Summer Olympics in 08, the Beijing Olympics. One of the athletes I had been in the gym with back at UT wins an Olympic gold medal. And this is a light bulb moment. Okay. Not that I'm taking credit. They're a part of a team. They had great coaching. They're elite level of skill. Yeah, so it's yeah. not that I'm saying I'm the reason this person won the gold medal, but I am saying Wow, what a blessing it was to be a part of their process. Come on. Wow, come on. what did I learn about myself? That I loved it. I did it for free. I did it <laughs> while I was a college kid. I did it while it was just like, yeah, I'll swipe my meal card for you in the dorm if you don't mind spotting me on the bench press today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm willing to do it without the money. Sure, I could turn that into something I do as a career, and I might make some money on it. Yeah. If I'm good enough that I'm able to be in a room with an Olympian, an Olympic gold medalist, like this might be that lane where mm -hmm. I can uniquely impact lives. Yeah, and it's not yeah. just about what happens in the gym, not just about what happens when they step on you know, the track to go compete and represent their country. It's really bigger than that. It's like the conversations we had, the connection we had, the way that you can instill something in somebody's spirit when you're calling out the greatness in them that they don't yet see in themselves. Right, 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 right. And so that brought us here. Yeah, so now man. the league is like, we, we do reps on the turf. We do Ooh. like mental health support off the turf. We do social health. We uh -huh. do um, emotional well-being. For anybody who's open to the conversation, we do some spiritual strength and conditioning. And it's about loving the whole human. The well. whole human. I'm, I'm a very big proponent of like a holistic approach. Because yes. you can't really have one without the other. You know, right. you can work out your exterior, but if your interior is trash, you know, ultimately you'll you'll kind of like fall off on the exterior at some point. Same thing with your emotional well-being and your mental health. Like they all coincide. I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I went on this raw vegan diet challenge, right? Literally went 30 days with no cooked food, bro. Wow. Nothing hot. But it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Like the first couple of days, I was like, oh, I was dying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But as I went through it, I'm telling you, um, there were so many physical benefits yeah. just from changing my nutrition. Not only that, there were so many mental benefits. I felt more, more clear and yeah. clarity was there. I was more creative. I yeah. wasn't as down or depressed. And mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So like as I was eating better, I got more energy, mm -hmm. mental clarity. Like everything was kind of gelling. You know what I'm saying? So to hear you saying that here at the league, we care about the whole human. Yeah. That's inspiring. Yeah, we we mm -hmm. want we want people to not just get six pack abs. I mean, that's nice though. It's nice. I, I, great. I, I can yeah. use a six pack right now. I'm now just we, protecting <laughs> it. I'm just kind of protecting my six pack. <laughs> no, key word of what I just said there is just. <laughs> yeah. There we we want them to have it. We don't want them to just have that. You feel me? Right. We want people who come in here to get free from the brain fog. Mm. We want people to be able to, like, we got Man. a message from somebody who had trained here for a while. Yep. They had to move to another city and, and the whole deal. So as they were transitioning, they were so sad to leave. And this individual, she was coming in here, the strongest person in the room, the most fit. Like, it seemed like a person that had it all together. Everybody yeah. would be yeah. so inspired when this person walked in the room. This was the leader of the pack for yeah. sure. And yeah. then this person let us know after the fact, I was struggling with crippling anxiety to the point that some days I couldn't even put my socks on mm -hmm. and, uh, like, get out of bed. Yeah. Other days I was shook going to the grocery store. Pull up, walk in. Nope, mm -hmm. not today. Got to go home. 
And she was like, the gym was where I felt strong. Yeah. That was yeah. where I felt community and connection and the workouts were dope, but really the friendships were bigger. That's what pulled me higher. And so that's what we're looking to do is like love every aspect of the human and yeah. celebrate the leaguer's journey, um, what they're moving away from and yeah. what they're moving towards. Ooh. Moving toward fitness for sure. Right, right, right. Everybody's got something they're moving away from as well. Are you stepping out of depression? Are you stepping out of anxiety? Yeah. Are you stepping yeah. out of insecurity? Are you stepping out of negative self-worth issues? Mm. How do we then sow a seed into that such yeah. that people really begin to see their greatness? Man, so how do you do that? Well, back up. What is the league? Because it's more than just a workout facility or a typical box gym where you get a membership. Yeah. I can clearly see that the moment you walk in, the vibe is totally different. Can you just start there? What is the league? Yeah. We are an enigma in this space. We are a wave, okay? Come on. We, uh, Let's ride the wave. <laughs> we, just, <laughs> we just recently did a rebrand. Yeah. And we made a decision. We don't want our logo to be a freaking kettlebell with wings. <laughs> we don't want it to be like this, like... You got to have some strong <laughs> wings to fly a kettlebell, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we didn't want, like, the cartoonish avatar of a swole man lifting a barbell. Uh -huh. We wanted something that doesn't say Jim outright. Yeah. We, we ended up selecting an ant as our mascot and brand mark. Isn't that crazy? I it don't think like, I've ever seen an ant as a mascot. I don't, like, I can't imagine. But keep going because right? there's some symbolism there that I really want to get to. We wanted something that draws a big question mark in people's brains and makes them say, like, what's the story here? Yeah. Because we're a gym that's driven by our story. Mm -hmm. We're driven by stories like what I mentioned with somebody getting free of anxiety. We're driven by stories like the young lady who came, who was in an abusive relationship, who got up the strength to walk away from that. Yeah. Because of not just getting workouts and feeling strong, but learning about her self-worth and that she is strong. She is worthy of something else. She was able to move out of what she was in yeah. toward what she wanted. I think about stories of people who met for the first time on a date here at the league. Now they married. Like I officiated weddings. Like there's kids being born. Like so we have a the league, world population the, the league is changing. Singles night. Can we have a singles night at the league? We might mess around, have to do it. <laughs> like I mean, we just a couple ticks of the clock away from February. Like Valentine's Day, You've, we might have to do a little. You look, know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so the league <laughs> is a space where we absolutely have world-class strength and conditioning programming. We use our pack training format, yeah. power, aerobics, and circuit training is what that stands for. The K on it is the mantra and the mindset, keep moving. We're a space where people can move with heavy weight and move fast and be elite like the many pro athletes we train. Yep. Or you can move with lightweight and move slower because you're pregnant, you have a bad knee, you're 60 years old. We are a space for everybody to come get world-class strength and conditioning in the way that we would do it with pro athletes but also in a way that anybody can understand. Man. And then beyond those reps, we are a facility that looks at you like we would look at what our new brand mark is, the ant. Right, right, which Somebody is what I wanted to know. Like, feel why tiny, but they're the mighty. Ant. Yeah, so why the ants? Good question. So mm -hmm. we chose the ant because, you know, our, our system's called pack training. Yep. So we wanted a pack living animal. You know, like the most stereotypical and overgeneralized thing ever would be like, oh, we the wolf pack. We got a wolf on our logo. Like, how hyper-masculine is that, though? How, like, I don't know, it's just yep, yep, no, yep, yep. no hate. Somebody might uh -huh. choose that, you know? So I just think it's easy. It's, it's, it's low-hanging fruit, you know low what I'm saying? Low-hanging fruit, it's, it's, easy it's to easy. grasp, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's then, been done before. It's been yeah. done before. And done well, yeah, you know what I'm saying? For so. sure. We looked at other pack-living animals in nature. What's their culture like? How do they move? How do they live? Like, the gorilla they live in families, too. You yeah. could call those packs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a Texas Longhorn. We could have gone hey. with something like bulls, right? They're uh -huh. a herd or a pack, right? Um, what was amazing, though, is we look to these things out in the wild as symbols of strength. Yeah. The gorilla has big old sexy muscles. The wolf has big old fearsome fangs, right? But the ant, ironically, you can find it in your own front yard, and it is stronger, immeasurably stronger than the gorilla or the wolf. The ant can lift 5,000 times its body weight. Man. And I thought about how we look at people, how we view people at the league, because love people well is our core mission. Right. That's what we're all about. If we're not doing that, shut all this down, because it was never about the deadlifts anyway. We're going to feature some movement that helps you get well physically, but we are here to pour into you mentally, emotionally, relationally, spiritually as well. Yeah, yeah. And I, I looked at the way that we view people, and it was like, you might feel tiny, but actually you're mighty. 
You yeah. might not feel like you're enough. You mm -hmm. might feel like you can't hang with the wolves and the gorillas. That's fine because we see a strength in you that is greater. Yeah. And we celebrate that strength here. So leaguers are like ants. They are humble in how they show up. They are strong in how they perform. And they are always better when they're connected to the community. Ants Man. roll in packs or they die. Ants don't roll solo. Another thing, remember our mantra and our mindset is keep moving. Have you ever seen an ant standing still? I've never seen an ant like Ants keep immobile. moving. Yeah. They don't take naps, dog. Ants don't take naps, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying. Ants is out here. I am a proponent <laughs> for proper rest practices. Right. I'm going to go ahead and say that for the record. I think you need to get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right, though, bro. I've never seen an ant not moving, bro. They're always, like, especially them little sugar ants, the ones yeah. you can't catch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they always end up in the weirdest places, um, and they have an unbelievable survival survival rate. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's crazy, yeah. man. That's crazy. Tell me this, though, because that is a powerful, powerful, well-thought-out, intentional mission, especially the loving people part. Yeah. Where did that come from? Because you didn't just wake up one day and say, yeah. oh, I'm going to be a fitness enthusiast. Did that come from something that was birthed in childhood? Uh, maybe some sort of traumatic, you know, you know, any yeah. life experience. And yeah. you was like, I don't want anybody to ever experience. They're like, where did that desire and passion to love people come from? Man, that's big. You know, I feel like if I'm honest, when I was a child, I would say, and this got unlocked for me in a therapy session. Come on, therapy. Where I would say, looking back at my inner child, yeah, I don't think as a young kid I felt like I was enough, man. So I have this big, yeah, yeah. passion in me, mm -hmm. right? That's like it's like fire in my bones. I can't hold it in. Mm. I have to yeah. make sure that when I interact with people, I let them know that they are enough. Yeah, yeah. I champion and support and honor and celebrate and call out the seeds of goodness I see in people and remind them that they're enough. Yeah. And yeah. it's something I have to do. Now, also in the, in the physical fitness piece of that, right, right, right. my uncles, my mother's brother and my father's brother, my, my uncles on both sides passed away way too young. Man. And it clicked for me at a really early age. Like, man, people aren't just like getting older and dying because they hit the unlucky lotto and caught some disease and like... God called their number and wanted them dead. It's like, man, we have the power of choice. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some things are not controllable, and sure. we have to release those things. And you can, uh, you know, heaven forbid, somebody listening to this might know somebody who just tragically fell ill, and there was no way to prevent that, and I feel for that. Mm -hmm. I do see, by and large, though, where um, we as humans will choose certain lifestyle patterns and just not even think about the consequences, and ultimately... We are yeah. eating and drinking and slacking off our way right on into cancer, right yeah. on into a stroke, right on into a respiratory disease that ultimately can be our end. And so I decided at a really early age, that's not going to be me. Yeah. I am going to live long and strong, and I'm going to empower people as I'm reminding them that they're enough, that they can live longer and stronger lives. And so that's where loving people well came from. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then where the ant came from, I got to shout out our guy, uh, Giovanni Arias from Aria Creative. Uh -huh. He put his brain to work on how do we tell that story. That's how he ultimately came around with that brand mark of the yeah, ant yeah. to yeah, represent yeah. the idea of love. It's very well thought out, man. I'm, I'm really impressed with the branding and like the intentionality behind everything. Uh, like I, I love business, right? You know, and so to see everything come together, uh, a rock solid mission with strong branding, strong business, strong core values, a strong mission. It's like you, you're destined for success, bro. Oh, but man, I will say this though, any entrepreneur, any business has its ups and downs, right? For sure. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about that when yeah. we come back. All right. So we're going to take a quick, quick break. I'm sitting here with my homie Terry from the league. It is going down. Make sure y'all stick around because we're going to talk about some of the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, life, health, wealth, and fitness here on the Steel Save Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here on a Steel Safe show. I still have my good friend Terry from the league, and we have been breaking down the breakthrough. Yo, bro, listen, we are here in the league. I'm pretty sure you probably never could have envisioned like how incredible this is. I mean, state-of-the-art facility, life-changing moments with clients that are celebrating uh, their victories and your victories. Um, on Instagram, you, you, you know, the beautiful wife, amazing kids. It, it, it seems perfect, dog. And I'm pretty sure it is. 
but take me back to maybe a time when things weren't as glamorous as they are to this day, bro. Because I'm pretty sure as an entrepreneur, shoot, just as a, as a human, yeah. like life takes us on these incredible journeys. But take yeah. me back, dog. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I love how you, uh, you use the P word there. I'm very passionate about um, the idea that nobody is perfect. Come on. Yeah, that was intentional, and, by uh, the way. You know what I mean? <laughs> and um, I embrace the imperfection of yeah. the journey. And I see people who would say, like you've said there, like, man, there's these certain things about your life I really feel like yeah, maybe, and they'll take it to like, I feel like we can't relate, or I feel like I can't be my real self mm -hmm. around you, or Dog, whatever. I have never, ever seen you not smiling. Hey, well, the <laughs> smile is like, it's almost like it's tattooed. It's like, it's yeah. gonna be here. Yeah, yeah. On a bad day, I'm gonna smile, and on Come a on. great day, I'm gonna smile. Yeah. Um, it's like that, uh, that old, I think it was Will Ferrell. He had that joke about voice immodulation. Like Bro. now I am singing. Now I am crying. Now I am whispering. Right. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. smile is the same way. Like it's mm -hmm. here, no matter what I'm trying to express. Yeah. Uh, the, hey, there's power in that though, bro. Grateful for that. It's a gift, mm -hmm. right? Because joy is contagious. Yep. And I want to be a pandemic of positivity. If you get mm. too close, you're going to catch it. Like if you want to be stuck, stay from around me. Yeah. You're going to get real free. When you come in connection with me, because I will be a spreader of joy. Come on. It's another thing I think is connected to calling and purpose. Yeah. And I'm grateful to carry it. But I feel like nobody's journey is perfect. I feel yeah. like for anything to get to a level that looks good for others, mm -hmm. there had to have been something that happened in the dark that led to that coming forward in the light. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, for me, it looks like driving through Houston, Texas, on my way to this facility. Yeah, that's scary, though. Just driving through Houston in and of itself. <laughs> yeah, just period. Yeah. No, there were seven times that we applied for a lease on a building and we were told no. <laughs> and for good reason. We were just some kids with a cool idea, look great on paper, but we had no historical financial data to show, no P&Ls, no anything that would say, like, you can trust us to pay lease on time. Yeah, hold right? on, but, but like stop right there though, because there's yeah. a lot of people out there that have great ideas. Right, you know, they have these, you know, and, and to them they and they might just be really good ideas. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, you even had it on paper. Yep. Right. Um, and got told and still got told no. Yep. And there are people who get frustrated. There are people who actually get mad. Yep. Right. And angry when people tell them no. And it's just like you said. You said something that was really important. No history. You know, I didn't have any evidence or collateral that that if this doesn't work, mm -hmm. can you know how are we going to make this work? Mm -hmm. So and and you can't you can't argue with I have no history. You can create the future, and you got to keep on. What did Matthew seven say? Keep on asking, keep on knocking. Right? Asking you'll receive. Yeah, knocking man. the door will be mm -hmm. opened unto you. Seek yep. and you will find. So keep on asking, keep on Come knocking, on. keep on seeking. We have to keep on going. So seven no's. And it was terrible. It was heartbreaking. We're almost like, man, maybe we just shut it down before we started. This ain't going to work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally got an opportunity. We got it going. Oh, stop, stop, I'm sorry. Seven no's over the course of how long? Oh, gosh. Within it, like one year, like quick time frame. So it's, it's like, and I guess you could see that and be like, oh, at least it wasn't like a really long time. But it nah, was like a year is a long time, a bro. A whole lot of Everybody rejection. who was in the pandemic for over a year, that year seemed yeah. like it was 20 years yeah. jam-packed. So a year is a very long time. Our real estate team was hustling. We mm -hmm. were working hard. But yeah. we got rejection after rejection after rejection. It was coming so frequently, right? Yeah. Now, though, when I'm driving to work, I literally, catch this, drive past my nose on the way to arrive at my yes. Wow. If we knew how many no's we were going to have to wait through before we got to our yes, we would literally rejoice every time we got a no. Mm -hmm. Check that one off the list. That's another one out the way. Man. Wow. God saved me and protected me from that one that wasn't for me. I must be getting closer to the one that is for me. It's crazy. There are dark days in the journey, but the dark days lead to the light. The sun is shining even when it's raining. Ooh. It's a matter of perspective. Yeah, yeah. I've heard stories of people who have uh, gotten on a plane in, in cloudy weather and it looks dark. And then the moment they hit a certain altitude and they rise yeah. above the clouds, yeah. it's sunny out. Um, There's another funny story too, bro. My mother-in-law is a very interesting, lovely lady, right? I love her to death. And uh, she, But for the life of me, I don't understand why she likes to watch reruns of sporting events. 
Okay. She will literally like save the Rockets game and then go home and watch it later. Wow. And I'm like, I already know that they gonna win. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so I'll watch it with her. And then, but you know, when you know that they've already won, wow. when James Harden back in the day or whoever would fumble the rock or get a turnover, yeah. it doesn't upset me as much because I already know that they about to win. Wow, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, yep. So those turnovers or those missed shots or those, you know, because James Harden, it was a lot of them. <laughs> um, it didn't bother me that much because I knew we was about to win. Yeah. Um, and that's incredible how you said, like, these no's that you hit. If we knew that we were going to win, yeah. which we know that the battle is not ours. He already has the victory. Yeah. We're more than conquerors, right? And it's like, we know that we're going to win. Why do we trip so hard yeah. when we get that rejection, that no? Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, bro. I didn't mean to hijack your no, story, dog. I love that. I love that. That's so good. I'm glad you shared that. And I think... There's so much power in the no. You know, if somebody mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. trying to write the words not yet on a piece of paper and you didn't let them finish and you slapped the pen out of their hand too soon, you're going to be stuck with that no. Wow. Right? Yeah, You man. can't quit when you're getting a no. You can't let up. You can't relent. If you're called to it, you believe in it, there's purpose in it, there's somebody else's life that could be changed yeah. through it. Mm -hmm. You got to go do it. And I think that God doesn't bless us to give to us. He blesses us to give through us. Mm. It wasn't ever about me starting a business, my wife starting a business, us being able to be like hashtag power couple, hashtag perfect. Like, no, not at all. It's about us being the type of humble servant leaders who are willing to face rejection after rejection to ultimately someday find opportunity because then you appreciate it more when it costs you something, yeah, right? Oh, it Tell counts the it. most when it costs the most. And then now we view this thing as stewards. Like, I don't have to be an owner. I'm not an owner of any. I'm not actually like at a spiritual level. I don't own anything. I'm a I'm a possessor of nothing, a steward of everything. That mindset even changed the way I parent. Yes. You know I don't what I'm own these kids. Yeah. God don't have grandchildren. Those are his children. <laughs> I get the blessing. I get the gift of stewarding. And sometimes I'll be like, come on, guiding. God. Like you, you, you gotta have better judgment than this. Like, you gonna trust these kids with me? There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> but that gives me a lot of hope in those days when I, I don't feel like a good parent or I don't feel like yeah. a good businessman, or you yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, cool. If God thought enough of me to, you know, trust me in stewarding these children, I'm like, all right, bet I really can do this. Yeah. You know what I'm and saying? I think that we we get tests and challenges and we it's for a reason. It's it's growing us, mm. right? Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. hold these mindset moments sometimes in our workouts here at the league. And I'll ask a big question. And uh, so one day, I just went real simple with it. It was the week of Thanksgiving. So I'm just like, hey, what are you thankful for? But it can't be, I'm thankful I woke up today. Like, you have to really think. Like, really talk to me. Like, what are you actually thankful for? And then we went a layer deeper. I was like, what is it that you didn't ask for, you wouldn't have wanted? It happened to you. And now on the back side of it, you look back at it like, I'm so thankful for that. We heard these beautiful stories of how adversity grew people. Yeah. yeah. Challenge and hardship and um, the perception of impossibility mm. was there. And then when it was possible, it did get done. They yeah. conquered the challenge. Now they're like, oh, well, bring on more. Like, I want the smoke. Like, yeah. bring the adversity because I'm, I'm going to see it and I'm going to rise. You can present to me a stormy scenario. I'm going to find the sunshine. My position determines my perspective, and I choose through it to rise higher. When Man. that unlock happens in the human heart, come on, they are unstoppable. Yeah, it is. I remember talking to a gentleman, and I won't say his name. He's a very well-known individual. Um, I remember having a an opportunity to sit in a room and talk with him. And I remember him getting vulnerable and real with me. And this is before he had the platform he has today. Yeah. But I remember him getting teary eyed and he was like, I feel unstoppable. Come on. And that is so ironic. That was the year that he just mm -hmm. took off. Yeah, it's amazing. I'd have to have some kind of special invitation to be in the same room with that same individual now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It no, had I, I feel something like... to do with that moment that unlocked yeah. that yeah. I feel unstoppable. When that light bulb goes off, it's crazy. Yeah. The limitless amount of potential that we have as humans, but it's crazy. We don't tap into it until that light bulb goes off. Yep. I think about it with kids when you empower them to like, they, they start off kind of fearless, right? Yeah, and then somehow sure. along the way, we kind of put that fear in them. We're like, no, don't touch that. or don't do this. Yep. And uh, I saw a post one time, you got to like give your kids the the ability to be dangerous Yeah. within within 
confines, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. but you got to give them the, because life is dangerous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think about even myself in business. I remember when I first started um, asking for high ticket items. Mm-hmm. And I was scared at first. Yeah. I was like, uh, ain't nobody going to pay that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but the moment that somebody was like, no question, mm-hmm. almost didn't flinch, I was like, oh, why haven't I been charging this the whole like <laughs> the, the whole time? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and you take it to a whole nother level, man. How do you how do you pull that out of people? Like when you're training somebody yeah. or in a group setting, you know, um, is it something that's intrinsically inside of you or case by case basis? Like, let's say for me and you, for example, yeah. like, you know, we, we, we talking it out, yeah. we training it out. And, and do you just notice something in somebody? Do you, and then dive into it? How do you know when to pull something out of somebody? I like to model vulnerability. Yeah. And I think that that too is contagious. I think yeah. me sharing, right. If I am somebody, people could look at and be like, oh, but your life has this and that to it, right? It's mm-hmm. Like, huh, huh, let me share some of my pain, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, it was not fun being a gym owner during COVID. Ooh. You know what happened. Government yeah. mandated shutdowns of all fitness facilities nationwide. Like, and we can't tell you when you can open either. Like, those emails are pouring in. Hey, sorry, got to cancel my membership. Ooh. Love y'all. Hate to do this. Got to gotta do what's best for me. Can't pay for something yeah. I can't access. And we have no end date, right? Man, I forgot about Over that, bro. Over four out of every 10 gyms literally went away at that time, mm. right? Going through that and successfully we got through it. Like, I'm so thankful. Yeah. But yeah. it was tooth and nail, right? It was hard, right? That's one example, one very like public and obvious example. But there's so many other pieces. Like, during the pandemic, I went through a very bad mental health battle. Yeah, I'm yeah. known for my smile. It's almost like when I walk into a room, I understand it to me, my, my role and responsibility to bring a smile with me because I know that I'm a purveyor of joy and that the other people in the room are going to feed off of that. And I can yeah. literally bring joy to other people who haven't had a smile in a while with my smile. Mm-hmm. There was a moment during the pandemic I could not find my smile. Yeah. Part of it had to do with that. Yeah. Gym yeah. shut down. We yeah. trying to figure it out. And I'll, I'll say too, like, I agree with those closures. I agree with public safety, 100%. responsibility mm-hmm. during a pandemic. But it was so hard to wrap my head around like, oh, no, is this it? Is this the end? Yeah. And we have close friends. And for their fitness facility, sadly, it was a tragic end. Mm-hmm. And then part of it was things outside of the gym, too. All kinds of new unearthing of big, heavy conversations on social injustice and things of that matter. It weighed on me so tough. Yeah. And yeah. I went through a season of depression. Mm-hmm. It was terrible. It was foreign to me. It almost felt like an inauthentic thing. Like, am I being fake? Did I make this up? Is this really where I'm at? Start questioning everything. Yeah. Yeah, I was so unsure. Yeah. And just like didn't know who I was for a minute. Mm -hmm. And so I chose to take certain action to go to therapy, to get help, to have very vulnerable conversations. It's changed the way I have conversations with men forever now. Yeah. Because I'm like, I'm not going to let a guy who I know is going through something sit here and just big dog me with small talk and how great they're doing. Mm-hmm. Like, I love it. I honor that you're doing great. I feel you, bro. I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm happy for you. Yeah. But, but, but hold on, man. How you really doing? Come on. So I like to model vulnerability. I like to share my story. I like to be very real about it, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm a guy who's known for a smile, but I can tell you a story about the depths of depression, yeah. now yeah. I help you to unlock your story because I've normalized it. Yeah. You're not yeah. feeling like, man, I'm going to tell this guy something a little too real and he's going to judge me. Like, no. You can know about me that I can hear your story and I can pull out pieces in it that were clues to me that you are actually holding so much more greatness than you're aware of yeah. and that you have a capability. Because you've been that there's there. There's something that. that's possible for you that you just can't see yet. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I think that that's how we pull it out of people, by not pulling it, by not working, by not striving, by not begging, by just simply sharing our story, right? Yeah. And even at like a mental and hormonal level, there's this... There's this hormone called oxytocin that gets emitted during storytelling. Mm -hmm. So if I share with you a story that you would not have expected me to say. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're a business owner and this and that and da-da-da. Like, bro, look, man, I I struggled with crippling depression. It was really bad. I didn't know if the gym was going to make it. And frankly, I didn't know if I was going to make it. And like, now I'm here, smile is back in the gym talking to you. Man. What happens is we both begin to produce this icy, icy... I can't talk. (laughs) We both begin to produce this oxytocin. Yep, yep. And there's a connection, there's a bond, there's almost like a brotherhood that forms 
in a single conversation. Because it's a very relatable story um, since the beginning of time. Yeah. Right? It's something that we can all connect with. Bro, how long did that period of depression last? And I know you mentioned a couple of the tools that helped you pull out of that. Yeah. And then how, if you don't mind sharing yeah. a little bit more in depth, how did you pull yourself? Like, how long did it last and yeah. how did you pull out of that? Yeah. So I think it was kind of like a an un diagnosed thing that I was not aware of for a while where I just wasn't feeling like myself, but I didn't know what it was. Right. Right. Uh, but my, you were tapped into yourself enough to where you recognized it. Yeah. You know what I'm I saying? I knew something was off. Yeah. I wasn't really clear on what it was yet. I didn't want to go like announcing it and <laughs> you know, so I think I kind of like was in a little bit of a cave. It was a little bit of like a secret space. That's not cool. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't ever give yourself a chance to win. if You're trying to conceal it. Right. Mm. Um, my wife listened to a really incredible podcast where a brilliant woman was saying how she found that her husband was struggling with depression. Yeah. And this woman literally says in this podcast episode, if you feel like your loved one is da 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 da, they should hear this. And so wifey being a, the incredible yeah, uh, yeah. woman that she is and friend that she is, um, sent me this episode and I listened to it and I was like, whoa, what? Mm-hmm. There it's it like is. I've done all the things I'm hearing. I'm like, yep, that's exactly what I'm experiencing. I got to deal with this thing. And so from the moment that I decided to deal with it, I'd say it was, it was a few months of a process, but it was a process of mm -hmm. growing and stepping out of it. And I want to say yeah. that really, really clearly to anybody who's going through it. There's so much hope. It's like yeah. really like depression is a, a state of hopelessness that leads to not being able to get out of bed, not being able to find your smile, not feeling like yourself operating with a brain fog. And that process is a process of growing out of it, stepping out of it. And sometimes you slump and you fall back in and you can get right back up out of it, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think a big piece of it was starting my therapy journey. A uh -huh. uh, big piece of it is my faith journey too, man. Like yeah, man. just like spiritual growth will help mental growth 11 times out of 10. No, I feel you. I feel you. I, I've, I've been in similar situations where I've leaned on my faith um, but you know what, man, like sometimes when you're in that funk and especially when you've been in church or, or have a spiritual background, you know, you don't want to hear the cliches for sure. Right. Like never, yeah. <laughs> never has wanna... a cliche healed somebody. <laughs> I, you know, not I'm to not... say that they don't work. Cause right. I'm a bit, here's my thing. Cliches are cliches for a reason because there is power in them. But when you're in that moment, bro, yeah. like you don't want to hear it. For sure. And I mm -hmm. feel like, and I'm not coming at anybody's neck theologically. I'm not trying to start a debate at oh, yeah, all. Yeah. But one thing I will say that I, I have found to be a rub for me in church culture is this like, oh, you should just pray about it. Do you think I didn't already try that? You feel me? Right? <laughs> I think that I think that God has so many avenues by which he can come and meet you in your place of darkness and show yeah. you the light. And I think he can use therapists, counselors, he can use medications, you know, by, you know, by the grace of God, I never had to like go on medication. I, you know, my thing wasn't that severe. It's not a chronic thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to just have victory over it. I sympathize with anybody who is struggling with it for long periods of time because I understand that that's very real. And I would just say that um, I agree with you. Like we don't need the cliches. Yeah. What we need is empathy. What we need yeah. is humility. What we need is I hear your story, and even as I can't relate to it, it matters to me. I hurt when you hurt, man, and I want to take you from hurting to hoping, and so I'm here. Yeah, that's yeah. what we need. Stand in the trenches. Stand in the ditch with somebody, bro. That's big, cause again, I go back to my story. Uh, I remember uh, it. It was the meals mm -hmm. that people would, you know, hook you up with. Mm -hmm. It was the the opportunities to to share a meal with somebody. Like, hey, bro, let's go grab lunch. Or I remember uh, Toby used to hit me up all the time. Like, hey, bro, meet me at the gym. So, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. and he was like, meet me at the gym. And and, and it became like an everyday thing. Because I knew he was going to be like, hey, bro, where you at? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's hard to be depressed after you've worked out. Because yeah. you generally always feel good, you know, and yeah. you know the science behind it. Yeah. And it's um, another brain science thing. Yeah. It's, it's hormones. It's endorphins get released. And mm -hmm. you literally have some stuff running through your bloodstream that is telling you like, oh, we on, we bulletproof. It's ready to... We we ready to take Bro, we on would the go world. Box. We would go box downtown, and 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 after like tearing up the heavy bag, right? Like it's hard to feel. You feel unstoppable, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Facts. So that's that's incredible, man. Um, throughout this journey, um, this journey of life, family, entrepreneurship, 
um, like specifically, man, how has your faith um, been kind of like an anchor or a guiding force in your decision making, in how you move, how you operate, how you think? How has your faith influenced you, Terry, you know, the man? Man, it's been everything. It's a foundation. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, you got to dig a really deep ditch in order to build a tall tower. Like there must be a foundation to support it all. And my faith is the foundation for anything that gets built from it, you know? And I think that this is important for believers to hear, but I think really maybe even more important for non-believers to hear. It's not just like this cheesy thing. Like I yeah. just wake up, read my Bible for a few minutes in the morning, and um, I like align my faith worldview with some political view. Like, yeah. no, I don't get down with or that. Or it's like the thing that was passed down to me from my parents. Right. You know what I'm saying? They, because they took they, me to church. Yeah. I go to church. Because they told me I better have my butt in church and stay awake <laughs> and don't cut up with my siblings in church. Like, now I've chosen. Like, this is what I'm going to do with my kids. None of that. Saw God move. Changed my life. Mm. And it changed my focus. It changed my everything about me. It changed my heart. Changed who I am and how I show up in the world. It gave me clarity on who I'm supposed to be in the world, yeah, how I'm yeah. supposed to impact other people's lives, right? And I think that Jesus is bigger than Sunday. I mm. think it's not about like, let me have perfect attendance uh, <laughs> showing up at church and terrible attendance when it comes to the things that Jesus told us to do, right? Take care of the widow, the orphan, the poor. Like, I want to be out here in these streets loving people well. Come home, man. Forgiving right? our brothers I mean, and recently, loving our enemies. You recently, know I was on the phone with my grandma. She's like real old school. So like, yeah. she's going to always Typically come. Typically, grandmothers are old school, bro. Well, like. yeah, I'm thinking about what I said now. Yes. <laughs> in her mindset, she'll say the most yeah. like old school things, right? Uh -huh. So I, I was chatting with my grandmother. It happened to be early on a Sunday morning. She's like, baby, what you doing today? You going to church? Mm -hmm. And I was actually like, you know what? We're going to our neighbor's house. They got this really dope thing. They do pancakes and pajamas with a purpose where we go once a year and everybody rocks their Christmas PJs and they got a little pancake breakfast. And we're, we're building these box lunches to give to kids who are economically disadvantaged and otherwise they'd go hungry. And so they put this thing together where we get over 200 lunches out the door for these kids. And I was mm. like, honestly, that's what we're doing this Sunday morning. And my grandmother, even in her like old school way of thinking, where she dope. could be more legalistic and be like, yeah, but you need to be in church. She was like, baby, that is church. Let's go, grandma. It's not about the <laughs> building. It's about being the hands and feet of Jesus. And I'm so passionate about yeah. doing that in a real, tangible way that actually changes somebody's life. Mm. Not just, let's meet up to talk about it. Let's be in the streets doing it. Yeah. I'm not interested in all the other, like Man. the religious legalism, eh, but the relational hands and feet, loving people well. I want my life to be a reflection of like, I know he's a man of faith. Yeah. Not because he carries a Bible around in his hand, not necessarily because of his Sunday morning ritualistic activity, but because on Tuesday evening when I had a flat tire, he came to help me. Because on Thursday midday when I was down and out, he took me to lunch because when I had nothing, he made sure that he came with something hmm. such that I would ultimately feel like, man, I have everything. It's funny because, you know, obedience is better than sacrifice. There's so many stories in the Bible where it says God don't even really care about your offering or your perfect attendance if you're not taking care of your fam, right? Yeah. Like he says, you know, uh, if you're not forgiving your brothers, he's like, yeah. man, don't even bring your offering to the yeah. to the temple if you if you got aught against your brother. Mm. You know, go yeah. forgive him first before For you break. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I think like, of a particular scripture where uh, it basically breaks down. You sing these beautiful songs to me and you talk about me, but then like I don't see justice. Mm. I want justice like rivers before I want the music. Yeah, and I think about Micah six eight, love justice. Uh, walk humbly, choose mercy, right? And I think about the lifestyle that we're called to live. Yeah. And that compels me forward so much more than any podcast episode yeah, or yeah. business degree or motivational speaker could. Having my faith grounded in that, looking yeah. at Jesus as not a mascot for a religion, <laughs> right hey that's a good one bro right i've, I've heard that people say he's like a, religion. like a good luck charm or, not a good luck you charm. feel me yeah no no, no. Mm -hmm. like a wise guy like really like looking at those red letters mm -hmm. listening to the stories he told listening to the way he he didn't answer questions directly he would give you a question for your question yeah and i truly believe jesus was like sarcastic too bro yeah wasn't like, it dope I, like so <laughs> like the story of the good samaritan right yeah, yeah. dude is like 
you know, and this is the religious elites he's talking to. For sure. People who are like self-righteous and in their own head about, we've created these rules to help us get closer to God. Here you are standing before God. You're so distracted on religion that you can't welcome the relationship. <sighs> and then Jesus himself is like, uh, so the guy asked him, who is my neighbor? Yeah. Trying to say like, how trying to can stump I, him. you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, trying to, trying to stump him, dupe him, see what I can get away with, who I don't have to serve, who do I not have to love well? Right. Because if I know right. who my neighbor is, I know who it isn't. Sounds and like the Jesus, question my kids would ask me. Right. <laughs> so then Jesus flips it on, buddy, and is like, who is not your neighbor? Yeah. And he tells the story of the Good Samaritan and how sometimes people have to sidestep their privilege and service of another person in empathy no matter what the situation yeah, or yeah. social context is. And it's that kind of radical inclusion. It's that kind of grace. It's that kind of boundless love. It's that kind of forgiveness, reconciliation, and unity mm. that I'm seeking to walk out. And I'll do it imperfectly. I'll be having to yeah. learn it as I'm trying to lead it. But that is my heart's desire. And so my faith, and specifically through that lens of like, Looking at my faith as a yeah. wise guide for my daily decisions is everything. Mm. It's the foundation. That's crazy, man. Um, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb with this one, bro, because you said earlier, you talked about digging ditches because the bigger the, the tower, the the deeper the, the yeah. ditch has to be. The taller um, the tower, the deeper the ditch. You you, you mentioned um, you know your faith being so important, not because it was something that was imparted to you or something that you read, but you've seen God move. Yeah. Can you... Give me one example. Just, yeah. just, just, you know, just for me. This is just me right yeah, now, yeah, bro. Yeah, for sure. How have you seen yeah. God move in your life? Yeah, well, I remember how I ultimately came to a moment of saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I had grown up in church culture. I could recite yeah. the 12 disciples' names, the Ten Commandments, all of that stuff. I mean, I'm going to be real with you. I wasn't living a life that would reflect that at How all. many jobs can that get you? Right. How many loans or leases will that, you know, they don't put that on the application. Like, oh, can you recite how many books are in the Bible? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I had done all the, like, little Sunday school things. And uh -huh. I was close to church. I wasn't close to Christ. Mm, that right there. And, yeah, there's a difference. Uh -huh. And I had a friend, foreign exchange student. He was a really cool kid. And he had a real passion. And he was really living it. It wasn't like a Sunday morning, you know, I have to I have to show up at a certain time to a certain place, we sing some songs, we hear a word. He was like every day, seven days yeah. a week, like yeah. 25 hours a day, eight days a week. He was really living it, but with passion and was still cool. It yeah, wasn't yeah. like he's like corny because he sold out to this thing and he's in this cult. It was like, and I was like, man, that's amazing. Like, I see what's on his life. I want that on my life. Like, I'll, I'll actually choose it then. Yeah, had the example. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then I see beyond that point, time and time again, I always see God moving. I think it's kind of like there's a lyric by one of my favorite lyricists, No Big Deal. Yep, yep. yep. And he talks about, um, man, I, I wish I could quote it directly, but he says something the, about. Give me the how, paraphrase version. He says something about how um, you can't see God, but you can see trees, and there's something so beautiful that happens when the wind hits the leaves. Like things are That's moving the in the That's world the around us because a force that we can't see is happening upon them. And I see that in my life. On my darkest days when I needed hope, somehow I found hope. Bro. Right? There was provision for it. Yep. And even here in the league's journey, Come there on. were some tough times. We're trying to figure it out. We're scraping by and what's our solution? And then like, boom, the phone rings, and this is an individual who has the power and capacity. We still got to put in the work. Come on. But they can yeah. be a facilitator of something that mm -hmm. is groundbreaking in terms Absolutely. of what we now have access to. Yeah. Or we have an idea, haven't even spoken it yet, and then we mess around and find out things are just falling into line. I mean, it's crazy. Like, we're franchising right now, for example. Yeah. This is a thing that I believe to be a God thing. We announce that we're franchising. We have one individual come forward who's like, I'll never coach. I'll never run a gym, but I want to economically empower it by investing in it. Yeah, man. Then we have another <laughs> individual who's like, I don't have the type of discretionary income to fund it, but I'll step up. I want to run a location. Then we have a friend call. One of my childhood best friends calls out of the blue one day, not even realizing we had an investor, we had an operating partner, and we had an eye on a specific zip code. This guy calls me, not knowing any of the context. He's like, hey, man, I saw something on y'all website about y'all trying to franchise. I don't know if you're even interested in this area, but there's a space in Boom. And, he and it's names the zip code. The exact area that we had been eyeing. 
And it's like this space is about to become available within three months. You can move on it now before it even hits the market, secure a favorable lease rate. You know how quick we called our real estate team? Oh, for sure. That to me, I would say, is a God thing. A hundred percent. There was provision. Mm -hmm. Before we even could run into a problem, there was a solution waiting for us. Yeah, it's it's just too coincidental, yeah. right? It's too coincidental that it's like there's a, there's no other way to explain it. Yeah. And it didn't exempt you from the work, the effort, absolutely. The grind. We, we grind. You had right? to it's, speak that yep. out. You know, there was some. I'm pretty sure there was some pen to paper. For there sure. were plans. You know what I'm saying? So and some sleepless nights putting things together for it. You know, but I think here's the thing. We going back in the conversation a little bit. Stress so much about our nose, asking God for a yes. Mm -hmm. All we needed to have access to this was our yes when our situation said no. Mm. Like, are you crazy? Coming fresh out of a pandemic, you're going to do what? This looks like a no. It smells like no. Mm. And we're choosing, yes, we feel called to do it. We're going to do it. Don't know how, but we're going to do it. And then, boom, here comes investment capital. Boom, here comes operating partner. Boom, here comes real estate. And now, we literally just announced last week in our newsletter that we have another location coming. Man. And I believe in 2023, like I've been telling everybody, 23, <laughs> man, we, we go in Jordan in 23, okay? Man. Goat year on deck. Yes, For anybody bro. who hears this, just know I'm not being cocky, only confident. Mm -hmm, nah. I'm not bragging. I'm not boasting. I'm only stating by faith um, the evidence of things hoped for and unseen. Like, it's going to happen. Yeah, man. Nah, man. But, but, but I mean, the ditch has been dug. The, right. the foundation done. has been laid. Yes, sir. It's just time to continue to build the tower. Yes, sir. Right. You put in the work, the stuff that's been unseen, and God is just exalting you because you've exalted him. Mm. He know he he now knows that he can trust you yeah. as the good and faithful steward yeah. that you have proven yourself to be. Man. So I'm excited, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, I'm uh, and and I don't know if you noticed, I've been smiling the whole time. <laughs> Let's go again. It's contagious, dog. <laughs> man, it's going down, man. I'm super, super honored just to be in this space with you i think at some point i do need to come through and get a workout on man i, mean, I keep running just let me it. know we'd be glad to have you bro <laughs> we turn up in here too yeah it's yeah. not a boring workout we got fire playlists great coaches the teamwork and camaraderie in the room is crazy mm -hmm. uh huffington post came by and like had a guy jump in a workout and then wrote an article about us yeah, yeah the yeah. two things that stood out the most one of them was when you're at the league you are your only competition everybody else in the room is rooting for you come on come on and another thing he said was there's a, a disproportionate number of people who use their rest periods as dance parties. This is the kind ah. of community I want to be in. <laughs> so I think that's powerful too. Like just so you know, if you ever that's were to come active through, resting. It's active resting, active resting. Yeah, I love it, bro. I love it, man. Well, hey, do me a favor, man. Tell us how we can kind of stay tapped in, connect with you, and, and just stay locked in. Yeah, for sure. You can find me easily on social media. It's at Terry the Trainer. There's mm -hmm. no underscores or punctuation. It's just that simple. T E R R Y, the trainer. You ain't misspelled um, nothing funny or trying <laughs> no, to be too swagged out with it. I'm not getting cute. <laughs> I'm not getting cute with it. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, definitely shoot me a DM. Say what up. I will absolutely read and respond to your DM. Uh, and then the space that we're in is the league. It's at the league HTX. And uh, we just having some fun out here in Houston, Texas, trying to change some lives. And again, if you uh, look at the league and you find out we're not in your community, stay tapped in because we mm -hmm. dug the ditch. The tower's getting taller. We are expanding. We might be in your hood real soon. Ah! And if you're listening and you're one of those that's like, I want to start a gym, holler at us. We that's got a one. franchising system for that. Yeah, man. Oh, man, it's going down, bro. Let's go. All right, let's get it, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, thank y'all so much. I'm here with the homie Terry, the trainer. We have literally just broke down the breakthrough here on the Steel Save Show. You guys are absolutely amazing. We thank you for tuning in each and every week.